Hey Retro fans, today is the next episode in my Sonic Showcase series. Let's see how we get on. Hi, welcome to the show and the next episode in my Sonic Showcase series. Today we're looking at Sonic Jam, but not the main games in the collection, Sonic, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 or Knuckles. We're looking at the nice little feature of Sonic Jam called Sonic World, which is a bit of a mix up, a big mixed bag of different things here and there. We're going to be looking at what it meant for Sega, what it mean for me personally as a huge Sonic fan, what could have been. But before we do any of that, let's take a look at some of the game footage and find out exactly what Sonic World was. Sonic World is essentially a 3D menu that allows you to get to different parts of this somewhat museum type Sonic experience. You run around just using the normal controller, jumping, collecting rings, the usual sorts of things you'd expect to do in any other Sonic level. Except this time it's in glorious 3D and you can move the camera around and have a real good look at what Sonic might have been like on the Sega Saturn had a 3D game came out. I think the aesthetics are absolutely lovely. I really think they get the feel for the early Sonic games and there's something magical just about the animation, the sound effects, the music. I really think this would have worked as a game. I would absolutely have loved to have had this at the time. The main portion of the Sonic world though is these museum type interaction so we have a gallery here and I'm going to showcase my favorite character Knuckles it's nice to see these development sketches and some drawings etc that you might not be able to see in normal times we can listen to some music well not just some music in fact all of the music from the main Sonic games in the series up to this point I remember spending hours on this as a kid I absolutely loved my Sonic music and when my hands were hurting because I'd played too much Sonic, I could always just pop into the music room here and just listen to my favourite tunes, of which there are many of course. There's also some great videos in the Sonic world. This is a trailer for a Sonic anime cartoon that was uh, released around the, the same sort of time. I um, really recommend it actually, there might be some younger viewers that might not be aware of this. It's uh, very different to the American cartoons that most people will be familiar with, so well worth tracking down. Here is the real hidden gem of the video section in Sonic World. A glimpse into a ride that was out in Japan uh, in the mid-90s, and it was called Sonic Ride. Imagine having a go on this if you'd run into an arcade or into some sort of a, a amusement centre and you saw this big contraption that allows you to you know, like an amusement ride that allows you to run behind Sonic and get into that world. Look at this wonderful like rendered graphics. This is so 90s. I absolutely love it. This is one thing I would really love to have a go on. I'd love to find out if anyone knew there was any of these still out in Japan that you can actually have a go on. It would be absolutely amazing. Here's the loop de loop. Way. The main feature of Sonic World though um, is definitely these missions that you have. They're not really that in depth to be honest and they're quite easy to complete once you get through them and this is an example of one we have to hit the free star post in a set time limit and um, once you do that you run back to the to the start of the level there to, to complete the mission. So they're not they're not in depth but it adds a little bit of fun and it actually gets to show you what it might have been like had this game actually been 
you know, fully formed. Um, once you do all of the missions, you um, find yourself um, back at the start here and you finish up and you complete the game and a giant Sonic ring appears um, that you need to collect to, to complete Sonic World. So that was a quick whistle-stop tour of Sonic World uh, within Sonic Jam. It does bring up a lot of what-ifs, doesn't it? It would have been marvellous to have had a whole game like Sonic World. They could have had you know, five, six different zones. You could have even used some 3D special stages like the ones in the um, Sega Saturn version of Sonic 3D. I would have really loved that, especially as a huge Sonic fan back then. But I think we have to be realistic. By the time Sonic Jam actually got released, Sega were pretty much well into the development of the Dreamcast. And we all know that Sonic Adventure came out on that as one of the first games. So I don't think we can feel too bad about not getting a full proper 3D Sonic game on the Sega Saturn. Anyone that is interested should look up Sonic Extreme and all the problems that development had. That was looking to be the game that was going to go up against like Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot but you know history knows it all went wrong for Sega but it doesn't mean I can't look back and think what if it would have been amazing if we'd had that game on the Sega Saturn but it wasn't meant to be I still just love going back listening to the music jumping around the level and just really enjoying myself when I'm thinking about the what ifs. But that was Sonic World. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do check out some other videos. I'm just going to do a little plug for my website as well. It's been going really well and I've had some great feedback. It's not just Sega on my uh, website. There's lots of articles about lots of different things to do with retro gaming. So um, have a look at that as well. There's a, there's a link in the description. But I've been Retro Faith. Thanks for watching. Keep it retro.